Good morning children. Today our topic is air. Air around us. So air is as important as water. It is around us. We can feel that. We are in air. How do you feel the air? See you are in a hot sunny day. In the evening you find a little breeze. It's a gentle wind. You can enjoy the cool breeze. Right. So when it is hot, you switch on the fan, then you can find some wind, the movement of air, the presence of air you feel when you switch on the AC. So you go near the vent of the AC, you can feel the flow of air. So air is everywhere. Air is needed for us to breathe. Without breathing, you cannot live. So air is needed for animals as well as plants. Right. So air exists everywhere. It's not like water. Water is found in some places, but air is all around. So how can we say that air is all around? Air is everywhere. Everywhere. Yes, it's all surrounded. You are surrounded by air. You see, you have taken one bottle. This bottle is empty. In fact, the bottle is not empty. In general terms, you call this bottle as empty. In fact, this is not empty. Inside this bottle, what is there? Air. So the bottle is full of air. I say that the bottle is full of air. How do you believe it? So you are looking for some proof. You may ask me, how can you say that the bottle is full of air? Show me the air. I can't show you the air, but I can show the presence of air. I have taken one tub. So in the tub, I took some water. The tub is big enough. So by that, the bottle can be submerged. Now I kept the bottle into the tub like this. The mouth and neck of the bottle are inside the water. I kept the bottle like this and I am submerging the bottle and I am giving a little tilt. So when I am tilting towards that direction, the water enters into this. As the water is entering inside the bottle, what is there? Air. The air is vacating the bottle. The air is coming out of the bottle in the form of bubbles. Bubbles. So when you are keeping the bottle in water and you are, you are allowing the water to go inside. So for the water to go inside, what must come out? The air must come out. Right? Say for example, you are entering into a cinema theater, movie theater. So if you wanted to enter into the theater, who are there, already there, people in the theater for the before show, they must come out. Likewise, inside the bottle, something is there. If you wanted to put something new, the old thing must come out. So I'm saying that the bottle is not empty. It has got air. I am dipping the bottle in the water. What is there in the bottle? Air. So unless until the air doesn't come out, the water cannot go in. But as you are tilting it out, then the air is coming out in the form of bubbles. Then the water is entering the bottle. You can see that the bubbles are coming. So that indicates the presence of air. So I told you that I can't show you the air, but I can show you the presence of air. So air is present everywhere. It's present all around us and it's very, very important. So I'm telling the statement the air is all around us. So where are we? We are on the earth, planet earth. So the earth is surrounded by air, a blanket of air called as atmosphere. So earth is surrounded by blanket of air atmosphere. So this is all air. The earth is completely surrounded by a blanket of air. The air, if we go high into the sky, that, you, that means if you travel away from the earth, so the layer which is close to the earth, there is more air, more air. The layer which is far to the earth, if you go here, the air is very less. As you go higher and higher and higher and higher, the air will be, the percentage of air will be less and less and less. It will be more on the surface. So on the surface of the earth, the amount of air is more. If you go above the surface, say for example, here are some mountains. Say the mountains. 
So this is here the air is more. If you go to the tip of the mountain, the air is less. That is the reason why people who climb the mountain, mountaineers, they carry the oxygen cylinders because oxygen because mountains are very higher than the land level, sea level. So at that very height, the oxygen level or the air level is less. So they carry the oxygen cylinders. Mountaineers, they carry the oxygen cylinders because the amount of air is less if you go higher and higher. Whatsoever it is, the earth is surrounded by a layer of air called as atmosphere. The density of the atmosphere, it goes on decreasing if you go higher and higher, the percentage of air decreases. Now let's see the composition of air. What does it contain? Air is a mixture of gases. This statement you have to remember forever. This is very, very important. Air is a mixture of gases. So air itself is a gas, but it is a mixture of so many gases. Among those gases, a few are mentioned here, which are very important. Water vapor, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, dust and smoke. So the combination of all this is the air. Water vapor. In the previous lesson, water, we learned that water turns to water vapor by evaporation. The water vapor is there in the air. It decides the humidity of the air. The percentage of water vapor in the air is called humidity. Right? So water present in the air in the form of water vapor. It decides the rainfall and other factors. Right? So second one is oxygen. This is a very, very important part of the air. Oxygen is needed to burn the things. Oxygen is needed for the living of plants and animals. We need oxygen to breathe. We are breathing the air. Why we are breathing the air? Because we want some part of the air to live. That is the oxygen. You are breathing the air not for carbon dioxide, not for nitrogen, not for anything, just for oxygen. So oxygen is the part of the air that is very, very essential for life. Moreover, oxygen is essential for burning a thing. In absence of oxygen, you cannot burn anything. That can be proved with an experiment. So here, take a trough with water and put a candle in the water and lit the candle. So this is the water. Now you take a glass tumbler and put in the water like this. So what you are doing is that you are closing this area. Inside the glass, there is some air. Now, the air outside cannot enter the glass because here is the water. So the air cannot enter like this. It is not possible. So the candle has to glow or burn with the air which is available inside the glass. Tumbler. So what happens? The candle is burning. It is utilizing the air. It is using the air. After some time, the candle puts off. Puts off. Now here you can find that the water level is raised. So here you see this is the level of water. The candle is glowing. After some time, the level of water is raised after the candle puts off. That means the candle used some part of the air for burning. The candle did not use the complete air because complete air is not necessary. It's useless. Only the oxygen part is useful. So the candle used the oxygen part of the air and it burnt. So the candle consumed oxygen. Oxygen is used up. So that area is free, empty, vacated. So that is filled by the water level. In this case here, we understand one thing that the air consists of oxygen which is important for burning. And if you just put a graduation marking on this, you will come to know that one-fifth of the air, one-fifth of the air is used in this case. That means 20% of air is oxygen. So generally it is denoted as 21%. 
okay approximately 20 percent one fifth means 20 percent so aid is needed for burning right so that is the second part the third one is nitrogen air also consists of nitrogen it is the major part of the air 70 percent of the air is nitrogen nitrogen it does not support burning it's an inert one it is no connection for burning it doesn't stop it doesn't allow right so it does not support burning nitrogen is the major part of the air the next one carbon dioxide air also contain carbon dioxide right the level of the carbon dioxide in the air varies from place to place the amount of carbon dioxide in the air is raising up because of our activities like pollution burning the fossil fuels on a large scale setting up factories and releasing the smoke into the air leads to overproduction of carbon dioxide in the air this higher amounts of carbon dioxide in the air leads to global warming overall temperature of the earth is raised because of the high percentage of carbon dioxide in the air it also causes an effect called as greenhouse effect or global warming the global warming is caused because of high amounts of carbon dioxide in the air and after that dust and smoke this is also because of the pollution factories vehicles construction mining all these human activities which come under the name of development of the society development of the mankind we are causing a lot of destruction and devastation in the natural setup and all the natural resources are over exploited and they are used without any proper standards so this kind of unsystematic exploration and utilization of the natural resources that it creates this kind of problems like dust and smoke it's a very big problem in major cities during the winter seasons morning time they cannot travel anywhere because the whole city is covered by the mist it's because of the pollution smoke and dust they cannot see the roads there may be accidents people cannot travel from place to place if there is somebody who is in emergency if they take an ambulance even the ambulance cannot travel in that smoke in the mist see such a condition that means we are how much we are polluting how much dusty we are making the environment so dust and smoke they were a part they were negligible earlier when we study about the composition of air we didn't study about dust and smoke but now we are studying about dust and smoke because it is a part so it has become a part of the air we made it a part right so the dust, the dust and smoke are also they are a components of the air so these are all the components of the air water vapor oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide dust and smoke the carbon dioxide in the air it has got some advantage also that is that plants need carbon dioxide for their uh, photosynthesis food preparation so for that part it is useful so to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the air we can make use of plants and trees that means we have to grow more number of plants and trees but we are doing the opposite we are cutting down the trees that is for the sake of getting a land for agriculture industry development housing and all so we are doing the reverse which in turn increases more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So, we discussed that oxygen is very important part of the air, 21% of air is oxygen. So, how it is available to animals and plants? Animals, most of them living on the land, so animals and plants that are on the land, they get the oxygen from the atmosphere, they are breathing it. But how about the animals and plants that are in the water? How do they get oxygen? So see that water also consists of oxygen but the percentage is varied. The amount of oxygen present in the air is different. The amount of oxygen present in the water is different. Right? So the water it consists of some air. Here we wanted to prove one thing. Water it also consists of some air dissolved in it. In water oxygen is dissolved, carbon dioxide is dissolved. How to prove that? Take water into a beaker. and let it boil on a stove. After some time you can find small bubbles coming out of that. What are these bubbles? Air bubbles. These air bubbles indicate that the water consists of air, dissolved air in it. Some animals, they live in the soil. How do they get oxygen? Soil also consists of air. So water consists of 
air that is one point that is proved by this activity in the same way soil consists of air how can we prove that just take a beaker and some soil and pour some water into that if you pour some water the water it fills the gap in the soil the level of the soil does not increase the water is going into the soil going into the soil means in the soil particles in between the soil particles there are so many spaces the spaces are filled by this water that shows that soil has got so many air spaces in which air is trapped so soil also has got air water also has got air that is the uh, way how the animals and plants that are living in soil and that are living in water are getting the oxygen so now let's see how is the oxygen replaced in the atmosphere the oxygen in the atmosphere is used up by us we are breathing the oxygen we are using the oxygen to burn something something is oxidized we are using up oxygen how it is replaced it is replaced by plants and trees so plants they are the major source of oxygen plants are giving oxygen to the atmosphere they are taking the carbon dioxide and they are giving oxygen plants and trees they help in maintaining the balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide so without plants and trees there is no oxygen there is no oxygen to breathe and live so its life is possible because of the plants as they release oxygen so this is the use the major use of the air is that it contains oxygen which supports the life on this planet so not only the oxygen the air is useful to us in many ways the properties of the air are used by man to devise so many new things the aeroplanes parachutes gliders right so the planes aircrafts so all these are developed on basing the principles of air and air pressure on basing the air pressure right so the air which moves with some speed is called as wind the wind is used to generate electricity in the windmills we can see the windmills so the windmills they rotate the turbine and generate electricity so by that windmills we get electricity so in olden days the windmills are used for different different purpose that is to draw the water from a lower level to a higher level so in such a way there are so many uses with the wind the people used it to sail only with the help of wind there were no mechanized machinery boats and ships only the ships were sailed by the sailors that is with the help of the wind so that is the advantages or uses of the wind in this lesson we have seen that importance of air the percentages of air the composition of air and the oxygen part of the air how it is useful to us and the nitrogen part of the air and the carbon dioxide part of the air and how the air the percentage of the composition of the air is balanced and what is the role of trees and plants in maintaining the balance and all these are the different points that we have learned in this listen